years ago, I went to my first meeting of the Constitutional Affairs Committee in Brussels. And I was kind of amazed at the discussion that was being held. Um, because quite frankly, it was a session of the most blatant plotting to get the Constitutional Treaty sealed, signed, and delivered as quickly as possible. Uh, they openly discussed the dangers of referendums and were agreeing on an urgent letter to the Council to look for mega funding to be made available to ensure successful referenda. Now, I remember putting up my hand to join the speakers list. And by the time they came to me, because they call you in order, uh, one experienced MEP after another had welcomed the letter, called for it to be sent immediately, and that we look for a prompt answer. So when it came to my turn, I asked that the letter be amended, and that successful re referenda be replaced by fair and free referenda. There was a very ominous silence. And the next speakers on the list were cautious. They didn't want to be seen to be opposed fair and free. Um, and, but they said that my amendment indicated a lack of trust and that I was naive. So I was given another minute to respond and I said that being Irish, I had more experience of referenda than anyone else in the room. And that fair and free could not be taken for granted and that in Ireland citizens had had to go to court against governments to ensure fair and free referenda. That answer, once that answer was given, the tone of the speeches, quite frankly, got nastier and nastier. But, uh, and former speakers began to demand for second chances to speak, which is kind of unusual in committees. And the contributions actually began to get angry. The message was clear. How dare the new kid on the block make an embarrassing and potentially dangerous suggestion? The chair eventually said that the issue seemed settled. However, I insisted on a vote. This raised new objections, but in the end, the committee exhausted itself. I held my ground about voting, and we voted. And I'm sorry to say that Fair and Free lost by 18 votes to two, with two abstentions. Since then, I've made a personal commitment to ensuring a fair and free referenda in all countries and in Ireland in particular. And I will do whatever it takes, whatever is necessary, to ensure a fair and free referenda will be held here. Um, and essential to that is provision of information, which is what we're all about today. Like, and now a little bit about INDEM. Like many groups, INDEM, as we are called in the Parliament, it's a composite group. Um, the independence group and the democracy group. Unlike other groups who have quite extensive policies, we have only one priority, which is democracy. And the minimalist five points of agreement for met to be a member of INDEM are all in reference to democracy. These include a commitment to referenda in all countries where it's legally possible to hold them, and a commitment to EU reform. The fifth commitment is to agree to disagree in all other policy areas, and we certainly do. Because our commitment as a group is to, is to democracy, our mission, uh, as this is the only referendum process allowed in 27 countries in the EU, is to full, accurate, and honest information. I have a great faith in the Irish people. They will take this referendum seriously. <coughs> It's an insult to a mature and intelligent people to go with them, as Commissioner McCreevy has done, that the people of Ireland will be a laughing stock, or to threaten them, as I've heard several politicians do, that Europe won't like us anymore, or even to guilt trip us that we got money, now it's payback time. No, the people of Ireland are entitled to full, accurate, and honest information. Only then can they make truly democratic decisions based on the merits or demerits of the Lisbon Treaty and on whether they agree or disagree with the relationship that it represents between them as individuals, families, communities, and as a country with the newly constituted <coughs> European <coughs> Union of the Lisbon Treaty. For in them, the mission is to provide as far as possible the information on the content of the treaty, on the actions of the court that determine <coughs> the meaning and effect of that content, 
and on the general history and context of the treaty so that we will have a fair and free referendum in Ireland. And I want to ask uh, the speakers to come up for the first two sessions. How did the Constitution come about? On the 15th of December 2001, the European Council adopted the Laken Declaration on the future of Europe. And uh, this was aimed at bringing citizens closer to the European institutions and establishing the Convention on the Future of Europe. The task was to draft the treaty establishing a constitution for Europe. Then on the 15th of July 2003, the Convention on the Future of Europe officially completed this draft. On the 29th of October 2004, in Rome, the constitution, the constitutional treaty was signed by the heads of states and uh, government of member states, but it still needed ratification by the national parliament. May 2005, um, we saw a referendum in France on the EU constitution, and it was rejected by 54.68%, with a turnout of 69.34%. So, at the time, technically and legally, the ratification process could not be completed and, uh, because you need unanimity for a treaty to get into force. Two days later, um, another referendum was held in the Netherlands and it was also rejected with a higher percentage of 61.54%. On the 23rd of June, in the EU summit, uh, the Commission launched a period of reflection, Plan D, and the Independence and Democracy Group took Plan D very seriously. Um, this was, uh, uh, they, had, they, they named it Plan D for the debate, dialogue and democracy. And they wanted to listen to the people. So we, we saw this plan as we said, okay, we finally won. This is what we want. We want the European leaders to listen to the people. So we took it very seriously as a, as a, as a group, a political group in the European Parliament. And we bought a bus and we wanted to be part of this debate. We wrapped it up with, 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 with the Plan D communication team. And we started going from one country to another. And we visited Greece, we went to Slovenia with the bus, um, we went to Denmark, we went to Sweden, we went to Finland. And we followed the Commission and the Plan D. But unfortunately, during this campaign, we started realizing that it was more of a PR campaign rather than uh, a genuine campaign of listening to the people. Yeah. Then we realized it was just a public stunt in order to try and avoid referendums again because they said, okay, we have listened to the people and this is what the people want. But unfortunately, the people were not in the equation. So basically, that's the plan D and that's the background of the Constitution. Fortunately, in Ireland, you still have the chance to vote in a referendum, unlike the 26 other member states. We look at Ireland and we envy Ireland because at least you have that and you know that you can have a referendum. Uh, us, we don't have that opportunity and the other 26 member states, we don't have that opportunity to air our voice or to have a debate or to get more information to the people.